Praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has blessed us to see the first Sunday of September, the ninth month of the year. And it is good to see you all this morning. And we have come to worship the one true and living God. Amen. Amen. The, the Ancient of Days, the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. Good morning, Cyrus. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Uh, at this time, we will have our uh, choral introit uh, worship team. same part a day that we remind ourselves that we have someone to lead us and to guide us and so father we receive that right oh, praise the lord praise the lord uh yes we will have our invocation now by minister david bishop you hear me yes good morning good morning family good morning church Clear hearts, clear minds, everyone bow your head and close your eyes. Father, Father, Heavenly Father, we come before you today, dear Lord God, just giving you praise, glory, and honor. Thanking you for allowing us to see another day. Father God, we just come before you, dear Lord God, and you act, we ask that you will fill us up. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Fill us up, dear Lord God, and let us be able to get through this week, dear Lord God. We are, all of us are going through so many different things, dear Lord God, right now. There's so much turmoil in the world, dear Lord God. There's so much turmoil in our neighborhoods and in our streets, dear Lord God. But we know we serve a mighty and a wonderful God who can do all things and everything. So we will put our trust in you and believe in you. We come to you this morning as a congregation, dear Lord God, as we are in our homes, but in the spirit of you. We ask that, that the Holy Spirit will go from house to house, dear Lord God, then heart to heart, that everybody will feel you and know you and have an experience with Jesus Christ. We just thank you for this beautiful and wonderful blessed day, and we just ask that you will continue to keep on blessing us and let us continue to grow in you and trust in you and believe in you and always never weaver in on our faith. So we put all and everything that we are into you, and we ask that you bless us, guide us, and keep us safe through every journey that we have to go on. And we give thanks, praise, and glory, and honor to you in Christ Jesus' name. And now we pray in the manner you taught your disciples to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name we say amen. 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 
Yes, praise the Lord. Our affirmation of faith this morning is Psalm 1. And it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in steps with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so with the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. The word of the Lord. Our pastor. We'll be moving now into our communion time. And I'll be reading from First Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. We will now uh, read together our church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, 
to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, and the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Does everyone have your bread and the fruit of the cup? This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. On that night before uh, his crucifixion, before he was given over, he ate the meal with his disciples and he took the, the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he told them that the bread represented his body and he said that we should do this in remembrance of him. And the Lord has allowed us to make it all the way to the first Sunday of September in 2020. And he continues to remind us that just as surely as the prophecy was fulfilled in his coming, just as surely as the prophecy was fulfilled in his coming to sacrifice his life, we do this in remembrance of him because one day he will return and we will be uh, fully received into the fullness of his kingdom. So through his broken body, he made the way possible for us to be saved. Let us eat together. Amen. The fruit of the cup. You can't get to the blood without first breaking the flesh. And Jesus reminds us that the new covenant is in his blood. In the Bible, we know that there it was the Abrahamic covenant the promise that God made to Abraham that all of his descendants would be as numerous as the stars and would have a promised land. And then the Mosaic covenant, how God through Moses gave the law and told the, the people of Israel, look, if you, if you obey my law, if you obey my statutes, this is what I will do for you. The Davidic covenant, where God promised King David that he would have a descendant, that being Christ, who would always sit on his throne and would rule the world forever. 
and the new covenant that through the shed blood of Jesus, we can be saved, have our sins forgiven, brought into a right relationship with God, uh, become not only the family of God, but become a kingdom of priests who will reign with Christ in the coming kingdom forever and ever. And so let us all drink together knowing that without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. And we say, thank God for Jesus who willingly shed his blood so that we could be forgiven and be restored into a right relationship with our heavenly father. May we drink together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. Amen. At this time, we will have the reading of the word, Acts chapter 16, verses 5. We'll go ahead and, and read it. Acts chapter 16, verses 5 through 10. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. This is the word of the Lord. We will now hear from Deacon Janice Francis, who will give us the Ministry of Music, Alabaster Box.
Hallelujah. It's now time, time for the message from our pastor. Morning is found in the 16th chapter of Acts Gospel, of Acts of the Holy Spirit, verses 5 through 10. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now, when they had gone through Phygeria and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithany, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troy. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for the preach the gospel unto them. I want to talk to you today on the subject directed by. Directed by. The movie Black Panther was all the rave in 2018. Shadrit Bozeman, recently deceased, played T'Challa, heir to the hidden but advanced kingdom of Wakanda, located in Africa. He must step forward to lead his people into a new future as he confronts a challenger, Eric Kill Killmonger, from his country's past. It was a powerful and moving movie, which continues to give hope to many young black boys and girls. It challenges the stereotypical images blacks portrayed in many of Hollywood's films 
As much as I enjoyed seeing Chadwick Boseman playing an intelligent, compassionate, influential, and forward-thinking King T'Challa, I was more intrigued by the director of the movie. A film director manages the creative aspects of the production. They direct the making of a film by visualizing the script, which while guiding the actors and technical crew to capture the vision for the screen. They control the film's dramatic and artistic aspects. The director interprets script, set the tone of the film, work with department heads, work with casting directors to find talent, direct actors and the camera, work with editors to assemble the film and work with sound and music departments. The star of the movie is the one we get who gets most of the accolade. The movie would not be a success without the hand and eye and the ear of the director. Kyle, Ryan Kyle Coolidge, a 32 year old black man, directed the film Black Panther. The movie broke numerous box office records and became the highest grossing film of all times by a black director. Now, just like Black Panther, the movie would not be the blockbuster without Ryan Coolidge. The church is powerless without the Holy Spirit directing her throughout the centuries. From the day of Pentecost to this present day, we can see the visible hand of the Holy Spirit directing the church. The church, first church born on the day of Pentecost, filled the 120 with himself and gave them the ability to speak other languages. Ananias and Sapphire met their tragic end when they conspired to lie to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led Philip to preach the gospel in Samaria, which saw the power and might of the Spirit descend upon the Samaritans. Unclean spirits came out of, a people, out of the people, and the Holy Spirit healed the paralyzed and caused the lame to walk. The Holy Spirit led Philip again to go south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza to meet with an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was over her, all her treasury. In this brief encounter, Philip leads this Ethiopian eunuch to Christ. The Ethiopian eunuch is the first Gentile to come and embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ and he was responsible for carrying the gospel message back to Ethiopia and into Africa. It was the Holy Spirit that knocked Saul of Tarsus off of his beasts of burden, ultimately changing his life forever. It was the Holy Spirit who led Barnabas to reach out and embrace Saul as a brother in Christ. It was the Holy Spirit who gave Saul the boldness to speak in the name of Jesus. It was the Holy Spirit that helped Peter to accept Cornelius, the Roman centurion, as a Gentile convert to Christianity. When Peter visited Cornelius' home and preached the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone in the room. It was the Holy Spirit who spoke to the church at Antioch, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. It was the Holy Spirit that guided them on their first missionary journey. It was the Holy Spirit leading Paul, Silas, and Timothy to begin a second missionary journey. The results of their ministry were phenomenal. The Holy Spirit strengthened the churches in faith and more and more people came to the Lord. 
I'm arriving at my text for this sermon while pointing to the hand of the Holy Spirit directing the first church. Paul and his associates traveling through the Phrygian and Galatian region could not preach the gospel in Asia. Why? The people in Asia needed the gospel. Everywhere Paul and Silas went, they saw lives change. Regardless of the region, the Spirit brought about a drastic change. Paul and Silas and Timothy wanted to go into Asia, but they could not. And the reason they could not is that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, said no. And so Paul and his associates kept on traveling. When they came to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithany, but the Spirit blocked their path. Why? Now, for sure, Paul, Silas, and Timothy were significant characters in the saga of the first century church. They were on their missionary journey and people surrendered their lives everywhere. Paul and his associates preached the gospel. Paul and his associates were impressed and filled with great confidence because of the way people responded to the gospel. They were notable characters. The Holy Spirit, however, was the one directing their moves and assuring their success. Who guides the church is a lesson our churches need to learn today. For you see, the church is not influenced by any man or woman standing in the pulpit, regardless of how powerful they are and how influential they might become. No board of deacons and trustees controlled the church, irrespective of how powerful they think they, they are, or how much power they think they have. Although we are Baptists and we believe in congregational rule, the congregation does not determine which way the church goes. Beloved, I need to let you know this morning that the Holy Spirit is in control. The Holy Spirit determines the direction he wants his church to go. The Holy Spirit is the director of the church. He's in the background, but he does the creative aspects of the church production. He visualizes the script. He chooses the preachers deacons, deaconesses, trustees, teachers, and leaders of the church. When the church ignores the Holy Spirit and goes down a path of our own choosing, it leads to disaster, even though it looks as if it's successful to the world. When the church chooses her direction, the Holy Spirit departs and ceases to operate as director of that particular congregation or denomination. The Holy Spirit does not stop directing the church at mid a pandemic, just as he did not stop leading the church during periods of severe persecution. And you and I need to recognize that today, that the Holy Spirit is still directing the church there may be a plague uh, all over the world right now, but that does not mean that the church cannot be the church in the midst of the plague. There must be a voice. There must be a witness. There must be a power that lets this world know that there is a God who sits on a throne and he rules and super rules. And that power is made manifest through the church and the Holy Spirit is in charge of the church 
And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to direct us, to lead us, as he has done in the past. It is in times like this pandemic, when the Holy Spirit moves in mysterious ways so that God gets the maximum glory. We within the church, during this time of pandemic, we want to move cautiously. But when the Holy Spirit directs, it becomes our responsibility to follow. If the Spirit says no, don't argue with the Spirit. The Spirit knows what is best for you at that time. If the Spirit says go right, don't try to go left. Don't try to go straight. Follow the directions of the Holy Spirit. Paul wanted to lead his team into Asia. But the Spirit said no. Everywhere Paul went, he saw a great need. People, saw, Paul saw people lost in their sins and ripe for the harvest. If left up to Paul, he would have stopped everywhere and Europe would never have been evangelized in his lifetime. But the Holy Spirit put Paul under constraint. The Holy Spirit was not ready to take the gospel message into Asia Minor. So Paul had to forge onward. The Holy Spirit spoke clearly in his heart that this was not the time. Asia was to be evangelized, but not on this particular missionary journey. Paul was to return later to evangelize Ephesus and plant a church that would reach the entire region. But now was not the Holy Spirit's time. Beloved, can you operate within the Holy Spirit's timing? Or do you want to dictate what that time ought to be? Can you allow God to lead you even though he will tell you not to go in a certain places or go in certain directions or deal with certain people? Can you be open to what God is saying in this time? Yes, it's a pandemic. Yes, people are dying, but, but people are being born every day. God still sits on the throne. God is still in control. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He's given you food for your table. He's given you clothes. He's given you a shelter. He has been your God. Let him lead you. But recognize, there are some areas he will not lead us. There are some areas he will say no. And when he says no, we need to listen and adhere and follow. And so Paul, listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit, continued until he arrived at Troas. There in Troas, Paul saw a vision of a man, a certain Macedonian, standing there and imploring him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Luke writes, and when he had seen the vision, he wanted at once, we wanted at once, to go away to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. And the rest is history. The Holy Spirit directed the evangelization of Jerusalem. 
the Holy Spirit directed the evangelization of Judea. The Holy Spirit directed the evangelization of Samaria. And the Holy Spirit directed the evangelization unto the utmost part of the earth. Is this not what Jesus asked the church to do? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the farthest path part of the earth. When the Holy Spirit does not direct the church, strife and division tear the church apart. When the Holy Spirit does not direct the church, the witness of the church is marred. When the Holy Spirit does not direct the church, the wanderers, they, the church wanders aimlessly from one failed project to another. When the Holy Spirit does not direct the church, personality cults arises. When the Holy Spirit does not direct the church, money and buildings become more important than people. When the Holy Spirit does not direct the church, a handful of people attempt to rule the church. But beloved, even in the 21st century, the Holy Spirit is still in control and still directs his church. And when the Holy Spirit directs his church, blind will see. When the Holy Spirit directs his church, the lame will walk. When the Holy Spirit directs his church, the deaf will uh, hear. When the Holy Spirit directs his church, the dumb will talk. When the Holy Spirit directs his church, broken families and relationships will be healed and repaired and restored. <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit directs the church, lost folk will be saved. And when the Holy Spirit directs the church, revival will break out and God will begin to de demonstrate in the midst of the world in which we live. Yes, he is still in control. Beloved, let the Holy Spirit direct his church today and let us be about what he has called us to be about. Sharing the good news. Not where people think we ought to, but where the Spirit leads us. Are you open to the leading, the guiding, and the directing of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the director of the church. That's why somebody said that the book of Acts should not be called the Acts of the Apostles, but the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And when you read the record, when you read this book, and you see how the Holy Spirit works, then look at your church, look at the church where you belong, and you ask the question, is the Holy Spirit directing this cast? Or is the cast going it alone? Directed by the Holy Spirit. I found the answer, I learned to pray, with faith to guide me, I found the way, the sun is shining for me each day, I found the answer, I learned to pray, I was weak 
had no weary, I had gone astray. Walking in the darkness, I could not find my way. Then a light came shining to lead me from despair. Oh, my sin forgiven, and I was free from care. Oh, I found the answer. I learned to pray with God beside me. I found the way. The sun is shining for me each day. I found the answer. I learned to pay. I was weak and lonely. All my hopes were gone. Days were long and dreary. I could not carry on. Then I found the courage to keep my head up high. Once again, I'm happy, and here's the reason why. Oh, I found the answer. I learned to pray with faith beside me. I found the way. The sun is shining for each day. I found the answer. I learned to pray. Keep your Bible with you. Read it every day. Always count your blessing and always stop praying. Learn to keep believing and faith will see you through. Seek to know your company and he will come to you. Oh, I found the answer. I learned to pray with God to side me. I found the way, the sun is shining for me each day. I found the answer, I learned to pray. Oh, I found the answer, I learned to pray. With God, be guide me, I found the way. The sun is shining for me saying I found the answer. I learned to pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We praise God for the word and we praise God for uh, Sister Eliza blessing us with the song about Jesus being the answer and the way. Amen. And every time we hear the word, we are uh, left with the decision about how we will respond. So if you have heard the message today, the question is raised, uh, will you surrender your life to Jesus so he can guide you and direct you through his Holy Spirit. Will you pledge your allegiance to the king and his kingdom so that uh, you can do all of those things that he has called you to do, go where he desires you to go, be who he has called you to be, which is a child of God, so if you've heard this message and you know that Jesus Christ is not the Lord and Savior of your life, you have not surrendered your heart, you have not asked him to forgive you for uh, your sins, that you have not pledged your allegiance to the king, we give you the opportunity now. I ask that you would send me a message in the uh, private chat and we will reach out to you and, and talk with you and pray with you. And again, the word tells us 
uh, in Romans 10, that if we believe that Jesus is, and I'm paraphrasing, if we believe that Jesus is who he says he is, the son of God, and you believe that, uh, that he did what he came to do in terms of securing salvation for us through his crucifixion on the cross, uh, if we believe that God raised him from the dead on the third day, if we can believe these things, these truths, and we confess them, uh, we confess our sins, the word is clear that the Lord will save us, that he will transform us, that he will make us a child of God, a part of his family, and we will be with him forever. So if you know that you want to do this, um, we ask that you would reach out to me through the private chat and we will continue the conversation. And if you're already saved and you've heard this message, um, there's always room for improvement. There's always room for growth for all of us. And so let us seek the Lord and say, you know, Lord, guide me, direct me, help me uh, to surrender to your direction so that we can do all that he has called us to do uh, in this hour. Praise God. God bless you. And we want to also thank uh, Deaconess McKeever for that uh, song. Um, I found the answer. Uh, I understand that uh, she's been suffering from gout for the last couple of days, but that didn't stop her from singing her heart out. And we are grateful for her message in song uh, this morning. It's time for, I'm gonna ask, Deacon uh, Francis, if she would uh, come with an announcement. Deacon. Deacon. I'm sorry, I'm coming. Good morning, everyone. We got a lot of background noise. Okay. I do? Okay, I'm moving away. Here we are. Good morning, everyone. I am here on behalf of the Pastors Love Committee to highlight a really momentous event in the life of our church family. The 40th pastoral anniversary of our, our beloved pastor and first lady, Reverend and Mrs. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. On September 27th, during our 1030 worship service, we will celebrate this occasion and I'm here to encourage every member of this church family to express their love and caring for our pastor by giving a gift. We are not just doing this because we have to. I'm sure I speak for every one of us when I say, we have been blessed for the past 40 years with an under shepherd who cares about our well-being spiritually as well as physically and who has tirelessly poured into us in the good times and the unusual times such as the one we're going through now so this year we are asking all members first all ministries for a gift of a hundred dollars and every covenant disciple and well-wishers a gift of forty dollars one dollar representing each year um, we have made it easy for you to give this gift you could use the church app online at bethesda baptist new york dot org we also have text to give and the number is 914-935-7515. Can send it by the US mail and just address it, attention Pastor Weaver Jr. Or you can hand deliver it to the church with a note on the envelope saying, attention Pastor Weaver Jr. I encourage each and every one of us to be involved with this. There is 
little that we can do or nothing we can do to repay this family for their love and caring of us over the years. And this is just a small token. So let's come together and show our pastor how much we love him and how important he is to us. Thank you. Now we'll have a, an announcement by Minister Cheryl Ann Sylvester. Good morning, Bethesda. Happy Sunday. So I'm coming to you on the behalf of the Debt Free in 23 Committee. On the weekend of September 19th, we'll be kicking off our Debt Free in 23 um, Go, and we're having a Crab Fest. Now, the Crab Fest is $50, all you can eat. It includes crabs, shrimps, and a lot of other stuff. Now, you can purchase your tickets via the um, church app. You can also purchase them on the website, which is BethesdaBaptistNY.org. Or Deaconess Vanita Moore will be at the church from Tuesday. I be, Vanita Moore will be there from Tuesday, I believe, till Friday. So is um, Trustee Lois Powell, where you can make your purchase. Um, I just want to encourage all of you to come on board. This is not just um, a Debt Free and 23 Committee event. This is a Bethesda event. And we cannot do this without you. We need all of your love and all your support to make this happen. When we think about being debt free, we have to walk in faith and trust God to be able to do these events. This will be a social distancing event. So when you get on the app, you will be able to select a time slot in which you would like to pick up your meal. On the day of the event, you come with wearing your mask, your social distance, and you make sure to bring your confirmation. Now, this morning, I know um, Minister um, Yule Thompson didn't know I was going to do this, but as Liza was praying, because I was talking to um, a deacon this morning, and I was saying to him, I got to do this announcement, and um, it just can't be any announcement. It has to be lifted up by God. And as she was singing that song, I was asking God, what should I do? What should I say? Because we need the involvement of everyone at Bethesda, right? In order to make this successful. And so as she was singing and I was praying and God said that I need to do a challenge this morning because on the Saturday, we're going to kick off the crab event. But on the Sunday between three and four, which is September 20th, we're going to have a pledge drive, right? And we need everyone. I know you guys have been getting your pledge cards in the mail. If you haven't gotten it yet, you will get those. Those are coming. We need you to fill out a pledge as to your commitment to the building fund. I know times are difficult, but pray about it, fill it out, and submit it back. And we're going to have a big event on these two days. And, and as Liza was singing, I was praying. And God said, you can do a challenge. So Minister Deb, I know you're out there somewhere. If not, I will be calling you. I need to put out a challenge to the Praying Sisters Ministry that every member of the Praying Min Sisters Ministry purchase a ticket to the Crab Fest. And then that ministry can put out a challenge to another ministry. Not only should you purchase a ticket, but you can encourage one other person along with you outside of Bethesda to purchase a ticket. I know we can do this because I see all these ladies sitting in their lovely hats and that was a challenge that we put out on uh, Thursday night for the ladies to come in their hats. So as we look forward to being debt free in 23, one of the things I want you guys to remember, this is not just a committee um, event or not an event by pastor. This is an event put on by the church moving in the direction of fulfilling the promises of God for us to be debt free in 23 and pay this building off. So we're starting on September 19th. I want you to mark your calendars and get ready. It's going to be exciting. We're going to have all, you're going to get a lot of food in the container. I've already been getting calls. What's going to be in the container? Um, how big are the crack bless is going to be? I think someone asked me, um, should I submit my pledge um, now? Um, should I wait? No, submit your pledge. Don't wait. Submit your card. Send in your, your, um, your pledges so that we can 
count everything together. So like I said, praying, min praying sisters, I challenge you, and I will be talking to Minister Deb, that every member of the Praying Sisters group purchase a ticket and encourage one other person outside of Bethesda to purchase a ticket. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing all of you participate in this event. Thank you so much. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right, all right. So, you know, as we as we do this challenge, you can reach out to another ministry and challenge that ministry. Yep. But that so we can do this. We have 50 slots in each segment from 12 to 5, and we need to fill those slots. So Amen. come on, let's do this. <laughs> you have a, uh, a flyer in your bulletin, and uh, the flyer tells you everything that you'll get in the uh, in the crab fest, you get crabs, you get crab legs, you get shrimp, you get sausage, you get corn, and you get potatoes. And we have uh, looked at if you if we get small crabs, then you'll get four or five crabs. If we get large crabs you get four crabs, uh, but you will have crab legs as well and shrimp and sausage and corn. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's something that we have been planning and we're hoping that you would uh, respond to. Uh, I know Minister Cheryl Ann says, it's all you can eat. And uh, I tell you, that's all you can eat for fifty dollars. You know, we 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 got big uh, containers. It's not going to be scrimpy. We've already placed the order for that, and so we're we're looking forward to that. Amen. And thank you for the challenge, because we need to uh, challenge people to become a part. Uh, Deacon in training Michelle Long is challenging the Sunday morning Bible study as well to come on board and to uh, reach our goal. And Deacon Weaver says she's challenging the Board of Missions. And so we're, we're, we're grateful for that. So, and I'm challenging all of the ministers so all of the ministers will come on board. Amen. Uh, you have an announcement in the uh, bulletin uh, for youth ministry volunteers. Uh, I want you to read that and respond to that, to Minister uh, Shabaka. And uh, if you want to volunteer to work with our youth, we ask that you would do that. And then we want to uh, let you know that the Empire Baptist is doing a week of empowerment, weekend of empowerment, September 18th and 19th. And this is the young people's auxiliary of our uh, convention. And uh, so if you are interested, you have that announcement as well. We do have an announcement uh, in the bulletin from Deaconess McKeever and family thanking us for being there with her and for her, not only doing the death of her sister, but also doing the death of her daughter. And so we ask that you would continue to keep that family in prayer. Well, we come to the moment when we celebrate everybody's birthday who was born in September. Now we got a list of everybody's birthdays who was born in September, and we want to say happy birthday to you. But if you were born in September, do me a favor, just type your name uh, into uh, the chat room. If you were born in December, you know, I mean, in September, type your name. There might be some whose name we don't have. Uh, and so we want to, uh, Latonia, thank you for uh, 
giving us your name. Born in September. Lauren, Danielle, Liza. Naomi, Ryan D'Souza, born in September. We, Monique, we want Sean, Ronald, Paula, Linda. We want to say happy birthday to all of our covenant disciples born in September. We also want to, Barbara Anderson, yes. Uh, we also want to recognize those who got married in September. Kim Jones, and Minister Blackman and his wife also celebrated their wedding anniversary. Uh, we, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, McCutcheon, Ethel Jean and Carl, 61 years of marital bliss. Uh, Deacon Sean and Sister Angela Farris, 22 years. Uh, Brother Dennis and Sister Deacon in training, Marcia Jarriott. Uh, they were married on, in 1987. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Eiffel, they're celebrating 50 years this year. This is their golden anniversary. And Mr. and Mrs. Kobe Caesar is celebrating two years. Amen. So everyone who was married in September, congratulations. Uh, Minister Blackman and his wife they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. Wow, God is good, is he not? God is good. Let us also remember that early voting starts October 24th. We have listed in the uh, bulletin the places where early voting will take place. I want to encourage you. I want to admonish you. Uh, I want to cajole you. Your vote counts. Don't sit around here saying my vote doesn't count. Your vote counts. And if we're going to make a change in this administration and take this foolishness away from our nation and become a nation of proud of who we are and, and how we are leading the world, then we need to have everybody who can vote to vote. Do not take the president's challenge of voting twice. It's against the law to vote twice. You can only vote once, but we ask that you will vote. We come now to the time in our worship service when we will receive our offering. The Bible said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Then it says, God loves a cheerful giver. Let us give this morning as, uh, you can go to the website, you can go to the text to give, you can go to the app. Now it's the time to give.
We thank you for the opportunity to give. We now ask Deacon Bridget McLeod Williams to bless our gifts. Let, Let us, us pray. pray. What, what shall, shall I, render I render to the Lord for all of his goodness to me? Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. We are just so, so grateful to you for all that you have blessed us with. God, we know that everything that we have has come from you. Everything that we are is because of you. And we just come bring in our tithes and our offerings, oh God. We give them back to you, God, as an expression of our love and our appreciation for all of your goodness towards us. And we just ask, Father, that you would bless them, that you would multiply them, and that you would let, allow them to be used to continue to build your kingdom here on earth, that you continue to allow ministry to be done that impacts the lives of your people, that transforms the lives of your people. Now, God, we ask that you would just bless each person that gave. Bless them, God, multiply their gifts. We ask that you would bless those who did not have to give, God, that they too might know the joy it is in being able to give back to you. And Lord, we pray that you would just continue to bless and to keep us. And it is in Jesus's precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you all and thank you for your gifts this morning. We come now to the time in our worship when we close out in prayer. If you have a loved one, a friend, a associate that you want us to remember this morning, uh, put the name in the chat. Just use the first name today and we'll be able to call out their names and we will uh, be able to ask God to touch Elwood and Glenn, Jeannie, Thelma, Archie, Leroy, Nat and Brent, Brandon, Marie and Phil, Christopher, Gerald, Mario, Antonio, and Carlos, Dimitri, Joan, Herbert, David, Diane, Asia, Patsy, Ron, Courtney and Xavier, Tim Jr., Sal, Star, Velma, Tamia, Sonia, the family of Adrian Duncans, James, the Lord's Vickers, Shondell, Patsy, Jean, Jerica, Denise, Miss Lan, Diara, Rosa, Madeline, Kobe, Charlene, Tamia, Samuel, uh, Hendricks and family. Kim, Larray, Joan, and Isaac, Minister Shabaka, Antoinette, Samuel, Leslie and Norma, Crawford, Tanshia, Peter, Tria, Anthony, Nika, and Nassan, Sharon, Winfoot, Devon, James, Donald, Wayne, Robert, all of the children of Bethesda, Rosa, the Mercado and Kaya families, Nicholas, Dolores, Spank Pearson and family, Nicholas and Hussein, brothers of Renee, Ada, Sarah, Beckford family, Craig Gordon, Kennedy and Morgan, Brewster and the Weaver family, 
Jackson family, Selena, uh, our church family, brother of Mary diagnosed with uh, cancer, Lester, Naomi, Thomas, Dana, Di Danelle, Elaine, Michelle, Lois, all of the clergy, Iron, Thomas, Weiwei, Tamia, Lane family, Lee's family, Mitchell and Mike Knight family, Latisse, Marissa, Simpson and Alexander family, Shelby, Will, Clark family, Mothers of Bethesda, Music Ministry, Cotsby family, Angelique and Leslie Evans and Hallie Taylor, Caesar, the world, Allen and Allen, church staff, Mother Liza Tuck, Healing Angels. Healing angels from heaven touch now. Healing angels from heaven touch now. Healing angels from heaven touch now, touch and deliver right now. Healing angels from heaven, heal now. Healing angels from heaven, heal now. Healing angels from heaven, heal now, heal and deliver, touch and deliver. Right now. Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, author and finisher of our faith, the God who is and who was and who is to come. As you stated in the book of Revelation, I am he that was dead, but am alive forevermore. We come this morning to, on behalf of these names that we have called, on behalf of people who are in need of a touch from you, We lift up the names and we know that you said that if we would ask, you would hear and that you will answer. And so we trust you, O oh God. We take you at your word. That's why we're asking. And we know, O oh God, that there will be those who have put names up who will receive the answer soon and let them be a witness that you do hear and answer prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for Bethesda. We thank you for her continued ministry. 
We thank you, O oh God, that she's not afraid to let you lead in the time of this pandemic. I asked, O oh God, that we would be open to your spirit, letting your spirit direct us, letting your spirit guide us, letting your spirit lead us. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening power, kindle a flame of sacred love in these hearts of ours. Bless now these your people. Whatever their needs are, financial, bless. Marital, bless. Job, bless. Whatever their needs may be, bless. And Father, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. For by faith, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And by faith, we claim the victory. Right now, right now, right now. In the marvelous, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Now unto God, who is able to keep all of us from falling and to present us faultless before God's presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the Church of God says, Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Be safe as you go forth today. Yes, enjoy your holiday. Continue Amen. to be Amen. Good morning to everybody. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. 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 Good morning, ever